Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here with Ryan, Existential University, right? Uh, existence. Existence University, that's right. There yeah. we go. We're going to shoot the breeze for a bit as objectivists do. All right. Um, so what do we want to cover here? You want to talk about uh, the dark matter? If you want to. Or tariffs? What should we do first? If you want to cover dark matter. What what uh, what do you want to say about dark matter? All I want is some evidence for it. My, I'm I'm secure in my position though, because I was waiting for a reply video from you on on what it is or something like that. You you oh, and I have a whole like series of things I want to start like from the beginning and work through, and cosmological uh, concepts are far in the future. All right. So what would be what would be the first thing we need to cover? Uh, the next thing we're gonna be, I'm gonna be covering is gonna be like the senses. So like, before we can talk about what we see for the Big Bang and things like that, we need to talk about how we see. So I'm I'm not interested in like just jumping on topics. How do we see? I'll tell you how we see. We see. Then we can get on with that. All right. What's yeah, the next exactly. step? Yeah. What's the next step? Because because uh, we see. I mean, we see clearly. We see. Well, the, the rods like go into like the neuroscience. The rods, the cones. Oh, the, Ar uh, Aristotle the didn't know. The... Aristotle didn't know shit about that. What? Aristotle didn't know shit about that. No, no, he didn't know. So what does no, he we... need to know about that crap for? Well, that's because I'm not covering just the philosophy. I want to cover the science. I want to integrate the the uh, biology of an animal into the philosophy of the animal. Aristotle did that, didn't he? You just said he didn't. He didn't know shit about the brain. Well, he did as much as you're ever going to do. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, he did what I mean, he he did what every philosophy can ever hope to do, and now yeah. that's done, and now we can move on because he said all the information we have comes from so our you senses. Just, you just wipe your hands of science. You just No, see. science comes later. First well, that's thing what I'm doing. The first thing we do is we say we can see and feel and smell and hear. Yeah. And then we move on from there. The that. Then we move on from there, though. Yeah. So how is coming back and learning more about our eyeballs going to tell us anything about philosophy? Well, because it's the concept that I'm using for my channel. I'm going in a circle. I'm going in a spiral. We're going from what a child learns to what an adult learns. Okay. How does all right? So so we can't talk about dark matter because we don't have no, any of that stuff. About it. All right. So what what should we what should we discuss? I'm gonna make a video on it. Or should we do uh, tariffs first? I don't give a shit about tariffs. Oh, it's troll facing those guys that are on the tariff thing, huh? The tariff tariff. Yeah, like, I think we shouldn't have tariffs, but yeah, me too. But I'd sure like tariffs rather than taxing our own industries. I get where you're coming from. But I just think that that's still, is that not also a productive individual that you're taxing? Well, all you're saying there is the founding fathers ninny on them because they still had forced taxation. I'm saying it's a really well, nifty... Well, the founding fathers still had slaves. So, like, not everything they did was a good thing. Yeah, but this tariff thing's sure nifty. It's the same thing that you just, like, that you did with Aristotle. You got some founding father, and you're just like you wipe your hands or everything else. Why? <laughs> why improve it from here? No, we we can we can understand uh, the senses, but that's not going to change the philosophical fact that the senses are the base of all knowledge. Yeah, no, I agree. So so once we say that say that we can wipe our hands of it and move forward. And if somebody wants to go study the eyeball, they can go study the eyeball. Yeah, but they can't study the eyeball without realizing that their senses are valid. Exactly. All right. That's why I did the physics video, and then a metaphysics video, and then I'm going to do the senses. The senses is going to be pretty short, isn't it? You're just going to say they're valid, and then you're going to turn the camera off, right? No, no, no I'm going to do the neuroscience. What's that going to prove? Okay, but what? Okay, I'll watch the video. We'll see what you prove. <laughs> okay. It's just I'm not just covering philosophy. I plan on covering mathematics, and I plan on covering physics. And neuroscience. Covering them how? What do you mean? A 
giving an objective account like, of them? Um, say like, uh, what's the, um, just, I don't know, like crash course. You know, it's, it's a whole bunch of things. I'm not just doing philosophy. In fact, philosophy is probably my weakest subject. I'm not even close to uh, Ayn Rand's permitted age to be a philosopher, so I don't try. What is it, 40? Yeah. I'm 39, so I'm screwed, too. <laughs> well, you see, but you, you can claim it before I can, so I'm not going to take the claim of philosophy. I know the sciences. And when I, like, I, I did the sciences, and then I found Ayn Rand, and I went, everything she says about concepts is, like, in the neuro textbooks, but no one's unlocked it yet. And I thought, well, I'll make videos about it. It's in the neuro textbooks? Yeah, like, it's, it's scattered all around, like, when she's, you know, the way she talks about how things integrate... In, you know, how this and that work together, if you can find it, like, in the science. So it's... No, you're right, I, I do... When I, I read Ayn Rand, I was like, holy crap, this lady had the neuroscience before she even, like, just by doing the philosophy. It, well, I mean, the neuroscience is just the details of, of our... Exactly, yeah. Of, of, I'm just, I just like the details. I really like details. Yeah, I, I have been fascinated before... Um, with uh, university experiments, like with the uh, site and stuff, they confirm Ayn Rand. Yeah. So, like, even the ones with the the monkeys, they have a crow epistemology of like twelve or something, and yeah. we have a crow epistemology of five. Yeah, and like they can they can move faster than we can, but it's like a cognitive trade off. They can't do really anything with it. Right. Except survive minute to minute. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, dark matter. You're not. You're not going to give me anything then. Well, you don't have anything. I understand the position you're in. <laughs> well, basically, that's the whole point, though, right? Like we take pictures of the of the universe, say just some galaxy. You can take it in every electromagnetic spectrum, and you can count up everything that lights up, and it doesn't add up to enough things. And so you go, enough, okay, well, it doesn't add up to enough <laughs> things for what though? For what? In yes. order. And in order, yeah. Galaxy. In order for in order for the galaxy to act as though it has this amazing donut of mass around the outside of it, that's what dark matter is. To what? act, the galaxies don't act according to gravitation. But they do. That's how we can like we have calculations for them, and they to get work. them to act by gravitation, you have to invent dark matter. No, not in every case. I, that's one of the things I've talked about. I've sent to you about the uh, there's a galaxy that doesn't have dark matter, and you said, "What does that prove?" Well, it proves that some do and some don't. And was that, that the one that was we, the blown we apart that one? When we count up the matter. Sometimes we can count it correctly. Sometimes there's just something we cannot see happening that we cannot see in in the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, was that one? That one you sent to me, was that the one that was had collided with the other galaxy and its mass was here and its stars were here? Uh, probably. I sent you a lot of things. Yeah. That, you know, showing, showing something that's been blown apart doesn't show something in situ. And I'm, I wasn't convinced by that anyway. I could just put a few black holes over there to create the gravitational lensing that they but say. When you say black holes, that to me says that you believe everything that I believe in. No, that dark matter stuff where 95% of the mass of the galaxy is in a donut, an invisible donut around the outside of the galaxy, that's it's obscene. It's not in a donut. It's, it's not in a donut. It's everywhere. Actually, probably most of it's in the center. No, the center is accounted for with massive black holes. We know about the center. We've got a video of the center of our, the Milky Way's black hole. Yep. Okay. We don't we, we don't need dark matter for that. We need dark matter for the speed of the rotation of galaxies. That's all the okay. work dark matter does. Okay. Well, they're not rotating by gravity, obviously. Now, why is what? that such a big deal? I mean, gravity isn't even 
fully effective in our solar system? Why would it be fully effective in the galaxy? Like, just really? in our solar system, to get out to Mars or to get out to Jupiter, you can't just use the law of gravity with, for your calculations. You have to factor in relativity. But where do you get that idea from? Because we factor in relativity with our satellites. Who's we? The scientists who run the GPS system. What are you talking about? They the GPS system depends on gravity. Depends on general relativity. Yeah, but but it depends on. Uh, so so they so they have to factor in the fact that these things are moving at considerable speed and speed and time are are related. Yeah, yeah and they have to take into effect uh, gravitational warping. Sure. Yeah, and that's all relativity. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't even. So gravity. Gravity isn't even the whole story in our damn solar system. So multiply our solar system out by seven hundred trillion times to get the galaxy. And why do you think gravity is the operative um, force in the galaxy? We have evidence that it's not. We have stars zipping around at the outside edge of our galaxy at this insane speed. So we have yeah, evidence. What does it have to? What does a star moving through space-time have to do with anything other than gravity? Does well, it have to do I, with the strong I, force? I don't know, but we're not going to get there by, by making up donuts of invisible, undetectable stuff. Like, the best argument, like, it couldn't, it wouldn't be strong, a strong force that did that. It wouldn't be a weak force. There's no evidence of the electric force, because we could see that with our telescopes. So it's either... So you either have to say it's gravity, or you're going to have to say it's dark energy that makes those stars go really fast. So I don't like, there's no other... I'll you, take, you either have to invent a fifth force... No, no, I'll take dark energy. Or, or, I'll take dark energy... One of the other ones is doing it. I'll take dark energy for 600. Dark energy. How about you won't take dark energy? Take dark energy. I'll take dark energy because, um, um, because dark energy is forcing the galaxies apart. So I, so that's okay. already doing work. We're already using that to do work. So I'm just going to enlist that and use that to do work. Okay. We've already got dark energy. Okay. How come we can't have something the opposite? The If one repels, how come we can't have a dark one that attracts? Uh, because there's no evidence for it. Okay. Sure. But what if we say we have evidence, whether you believe it or not? Then show me the evidence, baby. Okay. You guys keep sending me videos. I go through these videos, and at some point, some nerd says, we have to assume dark matter. <laughs> well, I don't know what else. It's kind of like, I don't know how else to explain it to you when that's literally... Just come over here. to my side. Just we, come over to my have side. have like a list of things. Say like we have 20 things, and we're like, okay, this thing doesn't account for this. Let's check that off, check it off, check we check off this list and we get okay, we got dark matter. And we no. don't even say what that is. It could be particles, it could be black holes, maybe it's electricity, but we need someone to actually find like the dark matter thing. Like but the pursuit for dark matter is just the pursuit for finding out why the mass isn't correct. The mass isn't correct if you want gravity be, to be doing the work, but gravity's not even the whole story in our solar system. So how what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Stop. What do you mean by that? I mean, uh, for example, when when uh, when Einstein wanted to give a prediction that could be tested with his theory of relativity, he gave the transit of Mercury in 1919. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. The uh, so that right there proves that, that um, Newtonian gravitation is not the whole story. Yes, right here on our local neighbor. Relativity. Huh? That's why he made general relativity. Right. So where is that factored in to the rotation of the galaxies? They just go out there and they use Newton, and then they throw up their hands and say, we don't get it, and they do dark matter after that. That's not true. Okay. Go ahead. That's that's all I can really say about that. It's not true. Well, they're saying that gravity does the operations out there. Yeah. Gravity isn't even fully responsible for the transit of Mercury. We have to factor in relativity right here in our solar system. But relativity is gravity. Mm, not the way they're doing it. They're doing it with dark matter. 
Now, if they wanted to, if they wanted to do relativity and gravity together, they would use the the negative force that's pushing the the everything apart. That's the neighborhood force out there at the edge of the galaxy. I don't know what it is, whether it's negative expansion, vacuum expansion, are we expanding into a vacuum and it's, that's the pressure of existence or something? I don't know what it is. You know, Einstein had it in his original equations and he didn't know what it was, so he plugged it up with the constant. Yeah, but that constant, he wanted to make it steady. So he canceled that like dark energy effect. Yeah, but the dark energy is written inside because, the nature of atoms. Well, but that you're proving a point that Einstein made mistakes, and that just because he might have said something about a Venus transit doesn't mean everything he said was actually brilliant. No, no, but it proves that um, gravitation is not sufficient to tell us how things are moving. Just in our local neighborhood, we have to account for something more than gravitation. Gravitation is not the whole story. It's like a snapshot picture of an instant. What do you, what do you think gravity is? Uh, the mass attracts matter. In what? This universe. Is there like? Is it in a medium? Yeah, I think there's an ether, but um, because what? Because I don't believe in space. So yeah, I think there's an ether. What if I just called that space time, not ether? Then you've got two words there, and I and I and I'm saying, what do you mean by that? I mean that when you stretch an area of space, there's no space. Event, there's no such thing as space. The time. There's no such thing as space. No, what you're saying is bending the ether has an yeah, effect on time. If I'm saying if we just keep replacing, what's the problem? If I say ether. We warp the ether around you. That'll have some effect on time somehow. Yeah, well, it just has a it has an effect on space. It warps right. it. It well, literally it it warps it. If there's no such thing as space. Uh, space doesn't yeah, exist. No? Space is the distance between two objects. Only objects exist. But then the universe is uh, full of objects. How? Can Tight, you say both? It is tightly packed with objects. Okay. Where are they? Everywhere. Where? Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, there's nothing. Where can I see them? There's not anything. There's nowhere that there is something that's not, but where there is, there's, where there is a place where there's not something, there is the nothing, which we would call the ether. Sure. I'm going to agree 100% with you. What are we going to call that thing that's everywhere. The ether. I can't see it. I, I think it's the law of identity. If the boson gives rise to it, if they're right about the boson, the Higgs particle, not the boson, yeah. pardon me, if they're yeah. right about the Higgs field, then the Higgs field is the law of identity writ in the universe. Okay. I agree with you. All right. Now, now you don't get to have dark matter anymore. Well, I just call the ether dark matter. It's everywhere. It's solidly packed. I can't see it. Well, now dark matter just becomes a woo-woo word. Well, so does the ether. Now, the ether is just the philosophical um, identification that the universe hasn't got any thing called space in it. Yeah, and we call that dark matter. How about that? No. That no. <laughs> no, fail. This is gonna go public. This is gonna be yeah. in public. Remember. Oh, I'm aware of that. <laughs> Have we sufficiently covered dark matter? Sure. <laughs> All right. What's What's next? Do you want to talk about tariffs, or do you want to go on to something else? Uh, what else is there? Talk about your art. Yeah. Your art. Sure. I'm actually looking at, uh, let's see, I'm not screen sharing with you. You can't see what I got in the background here, but I'm looking at pictures of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Yeah. That famous bridge, the arch bridge you got going over. What do you, what do you want to say about art? You, have you read um, the Romantic Manifesto? What? Have you read the Romantic Manifesto? Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you do art? Are you into art? Um, I like art. I used to do. I like. I used to draw, and I can paint, and I can. But I just, I don't. So. Right on. What did What did you paint? You weren't a modern painter, right? No, I was like just. I took it all through high school and stuff, um, and like was gonna get a college credit for it, but I just it wasn't that important to me. Not at the time, anyways. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it seems like there's a fascination with art that is sort of bizarre. Like, I go and set up my paintings in the park and stuff, and I know people from work. It comes out of the woodwork. We're talking, and it turns out they paint or whatever, and every single person says without fail, I, uh, I paint mostly abstract stuff. Every single person I meet that's a painter, you know, then they look at me and they look at all, the, I've got 70 or 80 paintings laid out to look at and all of them are landscapes of one type or another. Some sort of painting of some real thing, even in bizarre, weird pink and purple colors, like I did Mount Fuji with lilac or cherry blossoms and everything was pink and purple. It was ridiculous and colorful. But even that's a landscape. Even that's, that's as abstract as I can go. Why <laughs> yeah. does nobody paint realistic stuff? Why do they only? Why are they into designs and shit? Uh, like, like, is is there no place to learn it? What did you learn? Scribbles, what kind of abstract? Like, what did you learn in school? Did they teach you to actually do shading and color yeah. value and stuff? Yeah, no, we had a full little art studio and shading and portrait and self portraits, landscapes. We went outside and painted. Pictures of trees and stuff. Oh, you're in Canada. Oh. No, it was actually just my school. It was just a brand new school. I think it's probably going to shit at this point. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to say, that that might not be a fair appraisal of the educational state of an art class, because in the United States, I no, really don't. No, it is not. Yeah. My sister went to an art school, so that one's even uh, artsier. Yeah. Did they spend their time doing collages? The scene has got nothing. Huh? Every other school I've seen basically has nothing. Yeah, it's a pretty bad state of affairs. But Yeah, I kind of lucked out with my education. Hmm. Brand new schools with a bunch of brand new teachers. By the time we were done, they were done. <laughs> then it goes downhill. Yeah. Is Saskatoon still growing? Uh, not really. We have a city council that absolutely just sits on everyone. It's just like the, they raised the property tax last year, but then they started feeling the effects of it in their own pockets. So they made another law that the property tax doesn't affect the, the, con like the council. Wow. Brutal. Yeah. We can't, like, you can't grow any build, like, or to grow any building. I keep saying grow. Build any buildings any larger than. Uh, you know, a certain height, and we can't, like, grow out the city. No, they, yeah, and taxes just go up and up and up. It's a shit place. Huh. It's, yeah. a, it's a socialist hellhole. Like, we've got the UN agenda, like, bike lanes coming in and out. They, they spent, like, uh, two years ago, like, $5 million on putting in a bike lane, and then they took it out this, this summer because no one was that. using it. I heard about that. It took another, like, million some. I think they did that in New York, too. They had a bike lane uh, that they spent a bunch of money putting in, and then they had to take it out because it was just insane to have all that space wasted. Yeah. Without anyone using it. Well, you coming to America? The party's going on down here. I would if I could. I will if I, when I can. Yeah? Yes, I will. Are you in college right now? Uh, no, I just I did ten years of university. Oh, you done with that shit. I was gonna finish an astrophysics degree, and then I went, uh, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> I I don't need this. Yeah, I made it four years before I dropped out. There was gonna be a fist fight or a riot, though. I was causing a lot of problems. Yeah, I, that's basically the only reason I really stopped was I uh, I got in trouble with a, a tweet somehow. A, a tweet that I had that wasn't associated with anything or even the university got like reported and then like I got called in basically to a principal's office which is meaningless to me especially because I spent most of my time in the principal's office anyways and like 
they're just like, you should apologize for that tweet. And I'm like, um, no. <laughs> and uh, I just, yeah, the, it, the, this whole place is a fucking mess. Amazing. Well, yeah. I said y that y'all need gun ownership and freedom of speech before. I, I remember saying it 20 years ago and Canadians were like, you're crazy. America's way worse than Canada. It's actually, it's it's quite scary talking to a Canadian about any free idea or like most of them. You're like, having a gun on you could protect you if someone attacks. Or uh, it'd be actually probably better if we didn't have taxes paying for our health care. Canadians, they always say are nice people. They're not nice people. They're terrible socialist people. Like, terrible, terrible people. <laughs> you give them any of those ideas, and they just, like, they they laugh and spit at you. Uh, it's a weird fucking place. I just want... One of my favorite things to do is just chant, USA, USA, <laughs> and just watch all the, the angry heads turn. Yeah, you gotta come to America, baby. Yeah, that's the goal. Somebody said, uh, oh, it was a comedian, he's like, we're having a party down here. And Canada's up there banging on the floor, being like, keep it down, you loud asses. Basically. And we're like, come on down. They're like, nobody invited us. Basically. That's no basically how it goes. <laughs> nobody invited the Mexicans. They came. Come on down. <laughs> you just rushed the border. <laughs> It'd be a much harder border to secure. The Canadian border? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot bigger. It's a pretty much a straight line. They've got a lot of it secure, I think. Yeah, well, they have a lot of it on secure. It's just like a mile in both directions or something of like cleared out land, just a stretch. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't think they want to stop them from coming into Canada, though. It's a, going to be a porous border for that reason. Nobody cares. Especially yeah. if we legalize drugs on both sides, there will be even less reason to care about it. Yeah, basically. Especially for the government. They want more people to come in. What else? What else we got? I don't know. You, uh, you, you put up that comment that said, why do you ignore my request for a hangout? Yeah, I sent you an email. A, a, a business inquiry. Oh, did you? Maybe it was, maybe I didn't get it or something. To my, my brand and jesse at hotmail.com? Yeah, because I just pushed the for business inquiries button. Huh. I don't know what that means. For business inquiries, where at? On YouTube? Yeah. Over. I didn't think I, I wanted, as soon as I seen you had one, I was like, oh, how do I do that? And then I accidentally found my own, uh, and I didn't realize that basically your email is available to click on. Huh, that might have been, it might have sent it to a Gmail account. Probably. That's associated. Probably yeah. They might not have my, I, you know, got to set up a new email account every time you register a new thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, basically. Eventually, I went back to my old Hotmail account, and I just say, screw everybody. This is the only one I'm using. I don't care. Screw y'all. So, I got my me. Hotmail never syncs up with my, uh, like, phone or computer, so I, I use the Gmail. Gmail's neat, but it's full of nonsense. Well, I also, my, uh, the one that's actually hooked up to my all of my like business stuff is uh, on. I mean, it gave me a little VPN with it too, Proton VPN. You froze up for a second there. Just uh, did I miss something? Just in the last sentence or two, you froze up till then. I was just saying uh, that my other email, like the one I usually, the one I want to switch to, is Proton Mail, like. I put my all my business stuff on Proton. That oh. one, it's see, you're going through that thing where you're trying to find the right one. Eventually, you're yeah. going to go back to the first one you ever had and just say, "Screw all that stuff. I'm on back to my <laughs> yeah, probably back to the original one I started out with in high school." And you all can come to this one or fuck off. <laughs> yeah, basically, probably. So, well, uh, so about art. What do you th what do you want to talk about art? 
about my painting. You see my paintings I got over here? I just mm -hmm. fi I just finished one. Mm -hmm. Some lady asked me to do a painting of her campsite, which is not, you know, you go around and choose something to do. You don't necessarily choose some campsite. Yeah. And so I, and she wanted like certain details. She wanted her fern in there and she wanted the campfire and she wanted their little red swing. And so I, it's sort of like cartoonish an outline. The best thing about it is this uh, row of flags here that gives it some sort of depth or something. Are you, wait, are you going to actually show me? I'm showing you. Can, you can't see it? No, I can't see nothing. Oh, what am I? Oh, well, I don't know what to do for you. Let's see. What are you? You're not see? Do you do? I, am I not on camera for you? No. I've got a little camera in the upper corner of my thing here, and I'm showing you and me in a picture. We're all here. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you. I guess you'll have to watch the video after to see it. Well, how can I show you? Well, how can we talk about my art if we're gonna? If, if well, you I can't, I thought you were just gonna turn the camera on, but whatever. Is my camera not on? How is my I camera not on? Now I've turned my camera off. Now I've turned it back on. Hey, now I see you. Really? You didn't see me this whole time? Yeah. No. That's crazy. Guess I had to turn it off and back on. So now we can talk about your art. All right. Let me show you my art. Let me show you the one I just showed everybody else. If it was a recording for everybody else, who knows? Yeah, see, it's just a campsite. And there's her fern. That's really like. Good. I like the trees. Yeah, I'm afraid the trees are the best part. <coughs> That's my signature piece. That's my signature. My original conception, not very original, but <clears throat> Isn't that? just the question of how far should the post go, and I had to work that out over a period of a couple of months. The post just got taller and taller. Now cool. it's at the top. You should move it over slightly so your guitar lines up with it. <laughs> Help all the OCD kids. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I wouldn't have done anything, but you mentioned the OCD kids. <laughs> I thought, oh, great. <laughs> nice. Come to your audience. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know what artistically I'll end up doing once I have the skill to just automate my mind and just do what I want to. Right now I'm so worried about, you know, perspective and collar value and making sure that things look remotely decent. Um, you know, eventually I won't have to worry so much about that and I can just do what I want and paint a scene if I want to. So Yeah, I feel that. I wanna I wanna build my own like home. But I feel like it's just going to be a Minecraft dirt hut if I start now. <laughs> you know, it depends on what kind of home you want to live in. Like we're talking, we're talking about art, so I'm talking about like a Frank Lloyd Wright, you know, like kind of. We're talking fountainhead house, and so I don't even know how to conceptualize that kind of thing. So right now, I literally just got myself a little dirt hut idea. What about? Um. Uh, so who was it that built his house? Thomas Jefferson. Do you know about him? Yeah, yeah. He built his. He built his own house. Yeah, it's on the nickel. Yeah, Monticello. Yeah. Yeah. At any given time, when visitors came, he was walking around with boards and planks everywhere and stuff. <laughs> Is that your idea? Like to really do the building yourself, or to design it yourself? Both. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you're gonna you're gonna live in it while you're building it, then, right? Oh yeah, most likely. There you go. Well, he started out with one little hut, and then he that ended up just being the tip of one wing of the whole thing. So start with the hut. 
<laughs> yeah, but what's a good way to do the uh, organic architecture type idea of Frank Lloyd Wright? Right, so you literally you start with one spot, you just start circling your way out. It's pretty organic. Yeah, or go in an arrow direction. Yeah, and at some point, boom, up into a big structure. If you're gonna have wings like Monticello, you gotta have classic oh. architecture. Or you're just gonna flow with the area that you, like, uh, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, whatever the geography dictates. Like that, I want. I, uh, my wish would be to have a Frank Lloyd Wright original, but knowing he's dead, I don't know where to go at this point. Like, did anyone follow in his footsteps? Uh, I don't know. Afraid not. Everything's yeah. biodegradable. Uh, everything's green now. That's their main concern: is how environmental it is, not architectural integrity or anything like that. Yeah, there's a there's a house that I live nearby. It's got its uh, solar panels, you know, so a little sign in the front, letting you know the solar. It is just a black, like tin house, no windows, just like three stories up with solar panels. And it's like, oh, I'm glad you have your solar panel, but I bet you feel so living in that house. Yeah, and they <coughs> they probably spent more on the solar panels than they'll ever recoup. I hope. Yeah. And it's just the most depressing thing to look at. Like, and you couldn't like enjoy it from the inside either because you can't even look out. There's no windows. Wow, so, that's like, atrocious. Better be nicely painted walls, but I bet they're gray. You know, come to think of it, that far north using solar panels is pretty silly. Oh, it is ridiculously stupid. <laughs> and yet, it is a like a currently right like this summer a booming industry this summer. And it's like, you fucking idiots, wait until winter time when they're covered, they get covered in snow every single winter. It's like, that can't even, that's not even good for them at all. So it's just, no, it's so ridiculous. So that's like five months out of the year. No, it's like eight months out of the year. Oh my God, really? We have, yeah, we have winter for like eight months. Yeah. We get, we basically get, if we're lucky, most of April. Uh, then so a good May and June for a nice that's a very short little spring and then summer is like July August and it's basically back to snow nice. yeah that's where, about where I am except it doesn't snow maybe till November but then yeah, right up until April I can... anytime it doesn't care <laughs> yeah I was Counting the months one time, I said six months of cold, six months of warm. This is insane. Where do I live? I gotta move further south. Yeah, think about how I feel every every winter. <laughs> well, ninety five percent of Canadians are crowded right along the border there, so you're ninety five percent of you are within like sixty kilometers or a hundred kilometers of the border. I think it's a hundred kilometers, sixty miles. Yeah, I'm like one of the northerners from uh, Game of Thrones. The the ones I think. People that think they're in the north in America, I laugh at. And people that think that they're in the north in Regina, like South Saskatchewan, I laugh at. <laughs> but then uh, my fiance is from like Whitehorse area. So even she's way more uh, northerner than I am. Whitehorse sounds like it's up by Alaska. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I'll bet that was one of the towns involved in the gold rush. Yes, it was. Interesting. How big is it now? Uh, the city itself is, like, say, larger than Saskatoon, but that's just because it's got a city bounds, which encases a whole bunch of mountains with not a whole bunch of people. Uh -huh. So it's like the population is smaller, but the city itself is larger. Uh -huh. They're a bunch, a bunch of mountains for themselves. Saskatoon's got a pretty big downtown. What do you guys do out there? Is it oil and extraction, timber and mining? Uh, and canola and wheat. Oh, yeah, farming. Oh, yeah, wheat. Yeah, that's the middle of the Great Plains, basically. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Middle of fucking nowhere. I downloaded a few really excellent pictures while I was looking at pictures of Saskatoon. I'm going to have to paint some of them. 
Yeah. That's the nice thing about having the skill of painting is you see something you like, you can give it a try. Yeah, that's true. That's one thing I really wanted as I was learning to paint. I really wanted to be able to look at a nice picture or something and figure out how to actually make a rendition of it. Yeah, I always try. Uh, and then just try to sketch it out, thinking that, oh, I used to be good at sketching, and it just... It always just turns into uh, like line drawings of like stick men, and I'm like, okay, back to the drawing board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, kind of the problem I had with that painting there. I don't know how to sort of blend everything together and give it unity, but uh, I'm afraid that I just had too many details. I wouldn't choose a painting with so many details as a regular subject. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, how how do you blend something together for unity? Here's a old abandoned factory next to the railroad tracks, and I just did that like a, I didn't use a ruler for the lines or anything, so it's pretty sloppy, <clears throat> and it's on a wood board, so the pencil really didn't follow very well. And then, but for a really quick, like I don't know how long, less than an hour to paint that. Oh, yeah, that's good. Something like that's fun to do, and that comes from a photograph I took on the train while I was on the way down to Grand Central Station in New York. And yeah, the train's even more impressive. Yeah, it was from a train. It was a blurry phone th picture through the window, you know. <coughs> so, I don't know if I did justice to the factory, but, you know, for, for like for my memory and artistically... That's the type of thing that I aspire to be able to do, to find some old busted-down factory and capture it. Why busted down, though? Because that that's what, just because that's what the line is full of up and down the East Coast here. And these are grand old factories that worked for 100 or more years, and they've only shut down in the last 50 years since the war. So um, just because that's the view available... I also do old gas stations that are abandoned out west because it looks like a lot of the gas stations I saw growing up. But um, as per sense of life, I don't know what I'll do once I'm able to capture something I see and want to capture. Because right now I'm just working on being able to make a... But if my sense of life shows through there, then it's something like loneliness or something. But I just can't do... Um, I just can't do human figures or physical figures. So, why not more like focus or something like that? Spin that a little more positively. Well, let's see. Did this one that I thought was fun, where the focus was a was a house that's hidden. I don't know if we'll be able to find it now. I don't know why I like that idea. Oh, shit, I don't know where it is. Here, that's a cute little one. I haven't looked at that in months. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Watercolors are great. Yeah. What are you painting? Anything? Um, no, not really. Like I said, it was just art class. Oh, oh. <coughs> So, like, we, you know, do a little bit of everything. Like, I got good at it, but I didn't, I didn't want to do anything with it. Right. Now, here's one that I started out just by covering the page with color, and then mm -hmm. I went back with a black pen and picked out shapes for the vegetation. Oh, that's awesome. And that has the type of unity that I wish I could get in more paintings. Oh yeah, yeah. But then that there's not really a subject or anything particular there, it's just vegetation, but you know, it's not a bunch of individual pan plants painstakingly done like that painting I showed you of the campsite is a bunch of individual objects, each one painstakingly done, you know, detail by detail. Yeah. <coughs> And it's hard to do the unity thing. It's hard to get. It's easy to do a bunch of little teeny details, and everything's all separated and can be cut out, colored in. 
It's hard to get something unified, though. So that's what I'm working on right now, just being able to make something not look like it's a bunch of, like it's a kid's coloring book, where I just, <laughs> yeah. make sure you stay inside the lines. Here's a fair, just a street. Um, oh, yeah. And it's kind of got some lost and broken edges. And the collars kind of melt between here and there. And see, that sort of is a little more realistic than a coloring book look. Yeah. So there is somewhere between realism and impressionism that actual art rests, I think. You know? If you want to make a photograph, take a photograph. But if you want art, then you're going to want like a some sort of unity in the painting. Yeah, yeah Makes sense. This is what I just colored in today that is from Isaac Levitan. Doesn't really do it justice. Can I find it. This is the one. This is the one I've been looking for here. This is a subject that I like. See the house there? Oh yeah. I don't know why. Do I want privacy? Why do I like that? Do I want to hide from the world? Leave me alone. I'm in my house behind the trees. Shut up. <laughs> that's, well, that's what I want to build as a house. Something like that? Mountains and trees. Nice. Yeah, that's what I That's what I like. That's the kind of painting I like with a, a house peeking out, just hiding over there. So, these sketches are just... Oh, man, here's one of my grandpa. This is like the only picture I have of my grandpa or image on a thresher. Oh, yeah. And they went out and hooked up the thresher. That's the front of it. And that's the old homestead in Meadow, Utah, where my grandparents lived, or great grandparents, or something like that. That's about what I have for family history, I'm afraid. Well. What now? We got art covered? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Do we cover dark matter to your satisfaction? If you don't want to go through, like, the mathematics of it, then I don't, like, I don't see a point. What's the mathematics of dark matter? Well, part of it is that general relativity, which you keep using, but then you don't use and then you do use. So I just don't I don't see a point. How do I how do I bounce back and forth on general relativity? Yeah, that's why that's how I feel, at least. That I that I bounce back and forth on it? Yeah. Well I say that it's in effect in our local solar system and that it therefore must be in effect in the wider view of things, right? And I say, you're saying what I'm saying, but you don't understand that. Go over yours again? I don't... I missed something. That you are saying basically what I am saying, but you don't quite get that that's what we're saying. So we're just missing the mark. That's, that that's the... Uh, the one in the back there? Yeah, I've done it dozens of times on little watercolors and small canvases, medium canvases. Well, that one blended in well. Why don't you do something like that one? This one here? Yeah. Oh. It's pretty blend. Like the mountains and to the hills. That one's not green, though. I need to do one like that, but green. Yeah. This edge over here drops off. You can do one for every season. <laughs> People like those. I've sold a lot of those little... I do a little teeny canvas like this size with uh, the fence going into the distance. People like them.
This one's cute. A covered bridge. That's like a really simple little two by four inch thing, but yeah, it makes me think of that movie. I don't remember the name of Bridges of Madison County. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, covered bridges are cute. This is from some guy that lives in Indonesia, and he's a great artist. He goes out and paints, and this is my version of his, and mine's not good. <laughs> Uh, let's see, there's a guy named Tony, what is his name, he's a, one of my viewers, he went and visited a relative, and he put a picture up of his relative's house, so Tony, if you watch this, you're going to see your relative's house, and that's Tony's car, I presume, <laughs> and, uh, he just had these colorful red-orange trees to the side of his house, other than that, it was kind of an unremarkable picture, and I just said, hey, I want some red-orange trees, so I painted them. That's a good story. This was a tree that I, at some point, I realized it looked like a reflection of itself more than a tree, so I just turned it to the side and went ahead with that. So now it's a, a reflection of water in a bank. Like a, it's, That's really cool. It started out as a tree. So That's very cool. Sometimes you just got to roll with what happens. Like, it's not looking real good this way. All right, turn it sideways. Bingo. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that was very good, very creative. Sometimes you get everything wrong. This one's got something wrong. The background is dark, and I've never... Something went wrong, and I said, Oh, stop, stop, go to the next page. You could uh, add some, like, Chinese... Ancient Chinese art to the front of that, some warriors or something. Something could be done to save it. It needs some imagination. It's pretty rough. <clears throat> I have shoeboxes full of these little things. All right, well, dark matter's covered. Yeah, I think so. Tariffs. You don't, you don't think there should be tariffs? No, I don't think there should be taxation, especially taxation without representation. But let's say we have representation. Well, the, ta tariff, the person paying the tariff doesn't have representation. Yeah, but they're outside of the country. That's not the responsibility of our government. Why is it their responsibility to pay for taxes? They're not a part of our government. They're not. No one's meant to pay taxes unless they decline to purchase from industry inside of our country. I just think that's... It's just... It's just taxes. Yeah, but it's... Gonna, you're going you're gonna to say set up a system where you're going to cut most of it, like income tax and all the other ones, to have just one more hanger on... It's just, that's what's going to lead to the next one coming back. I just don't see it ever declining. Income tax was supposed to end, like, what, after World War I? It doesn't, they don't, it doesn't end. No, no, it always, it always increases. I mean, there's hope in the future because the United States was built at one time, so there's hope. Like, if we, if, if it came down to that we had to make that decision, yes, I might take your side. But ultimately, like that's, I, I say none across the board. But I don't see it happening in that way, anyways. So, I think it's a, All I think right. it's a, an argument that's not really going to ever happen. So, what's the point of it? Well, mixed economies slide inevitably towards statism, right? Yeah. Um. Soviet Russia moved somehow towards freedom. East Germany has moved towards freedom. China's moved towards freedom. That's debatable, isn't it? Yeah, I say all of them are. All of them are debatable? I say all of them are debatable. They're they're all no better off than they ever were previously? No, I didn't know. No, no, no. Just I agree with you with like the the China thing where it's like yeah, they're they're making strides, but they could reverse it anytime. 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 Yeah. Well, if they can move towards freedom, then possibly we can too. Yeah. But I just don't see why if we got, if we move so far that we get rid of all the other taxes, why keep tariffs? Because it's not a tax on people inside our borders. So? It's still a tax against a productive mind. Yeah, but they're not inside our borders. They're not I don't our. Care, but, but I don't care about that. 
that's just like protectionism or tribalism or nationalism. It's, you're clinging to, oh, well, they're one of us. Well, no, the productive man is one of you. There's people in your border that are that want to steal your money. Why not trade freely with the guy across the border that wants to deal with you freely and stop just not punish you're you're letting the people that want to take taxes in your border get away with taking taxes whereas you're punishing the guy you want to trade with well the ta taxation's not really an essential problem because we are going to pay for the government right i mean we want protection from the government yeah so, so it's a question of how how do we pay for it or how much do we pay yeah so what if we, since we want our economy to be strong, what if, and the power to tax is the power to destroy, <clears throat> what if we remove the power to tax within our economy? But does that not count foreign trade? And then only have the power to, attack, uh, to tax trade with, with foreign overseas entities. But why would you want to do that? So that we couldn't have the power to tax within our own country. Because well, the power to tax is the power to destroy. I don't understand why you just move it to another country. Because that's not in our country. Isn't that basically like the, the end goal of socialism is to tax everyone in your country and then you run out of money so you have to go and attack other countries? Why are you just starting with let's just not attack in the same way but let's just only punish the people that want to trade outside the country and everyone else inside. Like if you want to get rid of taxes, why not just get rid of all the taxes, including tariffs? Well, let me help your attack a little bit. Let me say let me give you something to attack me with. You'll okay. say you say they're gonna put a tariff on against you. If you put a tariff on against goods coming from France and Italy and Germany and Switzerland, then they're gonna put a tariff on against goods coming from America. So it's impractical, it's not gonna work anyway. It's just going to, like, you can't just tax the stuff coming in in a vacuum. It's going to have an effect on them, too, and they're going to fight back against you. So if it's, if it's destructive in one direction, it's going to be destructive twice over and multiply the destructiveness. Yeah. My argument just comes straight from the first principle, though, that taxation is theft, so I'm not, I'm not for tariffs. But if, if I don't care about whether I get attacked back. I, I stand the moral ground that taxation is theft and tariffs are theft. Now, I'm not defending tariffs or taxation. Yeah. I'm just defending the way that the original Founding Fathers set the system up and the reasons that they set it up. Because yeah. the, the power to tax is the power to destroy... So if you're going to set a power to tax, then the power to tax foreign industry would be a power that you wouldn't be afraid to give the government. Go ahead, let them tax foreign industry. Don't, yeah. let, them, don't let them tax our industry, though. Sure. So you're on board? Uh, historically, they were in the correct line. In a, in a dream world with objectivism takes over, I would not like it implemented. Well, let's see. I just think it's a pretty good idea. I think it's a really good idea. I like it so much. <laughs> okay. I like it so much that I can understand that the founding fathers were quite pleased with themselves when they came up with it. It's, it's a beautiful idea. You cannot tax within our borders. You can only tax foreign industry. Come on, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I guess, if you have a special attachment to you. You do, because well, we're talking about the written law. We're going to write down a 10-page document with the laws in it. And one of those laws is going to be, you can only tax people outside our borders. I just don't see why it's necessary. Because it's brilliant. It's a troll. It's the greatest troll movement in the history of taxation. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> Our founding fathers were the first taxation trolls. It's ironic, then, that that's your position and troll face is on the other side. <laughs> yeah. I'm not really in favor of tariffs or taxation. I just think that yeah. if, 
if we were going to, plus if we did that, I mean, think if we made that our constitution again, if we, if we just took out the, the, the amendments they've passed, just revoke them, and go back to that, that tariffs are the only way that the government can raise money, then if the tariffs got pushed too high, people would really bitch and moan about BMWs and their Steinway pianos, their French wine, their Italian leather suitcase. People would bitch and moan about this stuff. So the tariffs would naturally be pushed down by our representatives in government. Right? Oh, yeah, you win. Yeah, I see your point. I get it. <laughs> I get exactly where you're coming from now. It's good, right? Yeah. It's brilliant, right? Yeah, I get it. All right. Yeah, like, if you just... Because then, in my, in my scenario, I'm like, I don't know how it would happen that we get rid of all the taxes. Um, but in your way, you just go, hey, guys, we're just, we're just going back to stage one. We're just going to restart. <laughs> yeah. then, we're like, we're going back to the American way. You can really <laughs> get the American people behind. Uh, we're going back. We're taking back over. And then just go, okay, well, there's obviously just tariffs. And then, yeah, as you say, so many people have so many imports that would be like, okay, wait a minute. And you can move past that at that point. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We got, uh, we got one on board here. <laughs> yeah. We got a Canadian on board with the plan to revamp America. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pragmatic way to look at it, you know, but um, I don't think we're going to ever go to a zero taxation sy system. Yeah, not off the hop. But what they did do in Soviet Russia was they just sold all of the factories, all of the power plants, all the infrastructure. They just sold everything one day, you know. So at some point we might just do that. We might just say, all right, we just blow a horn and say all the schools are for sale, all the universities are for sale, all the hospitals are for sale. The government is out of all of these businesses. Our taxes are gone. We're only going to tax you if you buy shit from Japan. Wouldn't that be nice? Or China. Oh, should we talk about China? Where are you on trade with China? You got a bunch of Chinese shit in your house too? Oh, fucking probably. Probably everything I look at. Everything's made in China. These batteries used to last me two or three months. Now they're made in China and they last like three weeks. True. And they're, they, they charge more for them now. True. But it's a nicotine device so that disobeys the laws of the economics. <laughs> Wait, what? Nicotine can do that because it's addictive, right? Oh, okay. So you don't necessarily buy more because the price goes down. You buy more even if the price goes up. See? Yeah, well, I just kind of buy shit. I don't ever. I've never. I don't think I've ever stopped to check where was this made. <laughs> if I want it, I want it. I don't care. Oh, you'll learn. You buy. Uh, I've never really bought anything that like I'm. If it breaks, it breaks. Because besides like my computer. There's not many things that I have this desire to spend a bunch of money, good or bad, of a product. Oh, I found myself checking. I found out that there was apple juice concentrate coming from China, so I quit buying that brand of apple juice. Because who knows what the fuck they're putting in there. <laughs> yeah, just... In fact, I found some type of gummies that my kid liked from Brazil. I said, I don't know, let's just buy some American gummies. Who knows what they're doing down there in Brazil, even? But China, for <laughs> God's sakes, why would you buy food from China? Jesus on his throne. It just seems like a bad idea just for shipping. Just food and delivery. The idea of local is a pretty good idea, just, you know, because it's not going to rot on you on the way there. Well, if it's cheaper to buy apple concentrate powder from India, ship it over here and mix it with water, I'd buy that. But not from China, because who knows what they're putting in in China. What? What's the difference? In China, they shipped uh, baby powder concentrate in tank cars that had held some sort of uh, chemical in it, and a bunch of babies died. Because there's no, they just don't, eh, fuck it, who cares, you know. There's no accountability, there's no legal structure, everything's just a bribe to get your way out. 
Who knows what official okayed it. The guy who did it's not responsible. It was some official's job to stop it from happening. So, you know, a bunch of babies died. Yeah, it sounds... I've, I think I read a book about that once. Yeah, and we're, that's never going to stop until they have a, a system of law and accountability. They're just going to have a rolling, a rolling mob over there for a long, long time to come. So, and they're going to be absolutely incompetent this whole time. Russia still can't build anything. They are still incompetent because they aren't communist anymore, but they sure haven't changed their view of the world. It's just rip people off and rob people. Yeah, basically. And China's whole view of things is rip people off. So until they have legal accountability, they're just going to... Everything that comes from there is going to be dan dangerous garbage. I'm looking around at shit all over my fucking house. There's shit from China. <laughs> Just waiting for it to explode. It's probably off-gassing. I've got a keyboard over here. It's probably off-gassing from the plastic. So what do you think about free trade with people that own slaves? Is that free trade? I don't think that's free. You think I mean, we should have a law against... Should we have a law against buying stuff from slaves? I think so, yeah. That'd be legit, right? Yeah. And then our business would go towards <coughs> Australia or New Zealand or Canada. We'd buy our shit from free countries with responsible laws that recognize individual rights. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. I don't think you can name any country now. Well, I, I think we would have a short list. It would be, you, we would default at zero and we'd have a short list. It would be our enemies. You know, it would be five countries maybe that we wouldn't trade with. Like Venezuela, North Korea, Iran, Saudi Arabia, China. Maybe five more. France, obviously. France. <laughs> Yeah, France deserves to be on that list. <laughs> Sweden, I'm afraid, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there's an objectivist debate going on about what is free trade. And that's where I stand on it. Free trade is trade with free individuals. Yeah, yeah. He can't really drop the context of the first word. Yeah. I'm freely trading with that slave owner. That is not. It's not his productive work. Right. And, and, and that's my view of everything that comes from China. In, in one way or another, it enriches the regime or props up the regime, gives the regime more power. But does that, does it not count also for like me? I feel like with my uh, liberal government, I feel the exact same way. Every, every time they take money from them, or it's from me, they're propping themselves up. Well, but you have elected representatives. You can do something about it. You've got, you, you're on the internet right now. You couldn't be on the internet saying this shit in, in uh, yeah, China. Yeah. So there's still hope to change our system here. You and I are working on it. This video is going to be published and this conversation is going to be part of that. Fair enough, yeah. So they're not working on it in China. They're not allowed to. Even though Yaron Brooks published a book over there, Robert Garmong lives there. But that's, to my view, that's like living in, in, in Germany in the 1930s, being part of the Brave New Society. In the, yeah, or, that's, that's kind of how I feel, because I thought about it. I was like, if, if business is booming in China and things are becoming free, yeah, maybe. You know, if America collapses and China is what grows as the capitalist country, yeah, absolutely. But I'm not risking it for the next... 50 years. I I feel like there's some... Uh, no, I'm not risking that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not there yet. It might not ever be there, and it certainly isn't there yet. Yeah. <coughs> well, have we covered all the bases? Are we done? Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, we've done the Hangout. Uh, Excellent. Now we've got all the infrastructure set up, though. Now, now we know how to do all this, so we could do this... You know, easy and again next time. So, yeah, that's true. And these Skype things, we might even be able to do multiple people. We'll see. I think so. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what I've heard. So, 
All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I'll be sending setting this video up on the internet in the next few minutes, so you'll see it uh, pop up soon. All right. Sounds good. All right. Take it easy. See ya. Ryan, I call him Corey. Sorry, Ryan. I called you Corey at the beginning. I was thinking of that name there, Cooney. Maybe I shouldn't be doxing.